Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Good morning again. <laughs> we are honored to welcome today as our speaker, Professor Rama Subramaniam, Institute Chair Professor at Cell for Indian Science and Technology in Sanskrit, Department of Humanities and Social Sciences, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. He is a world-renowned Indic scholar, an historian of Indian sciences in mathematics and astronomy, Sanskrit guru, Vedic, Vedic teacher, and Indian philosopher. His broad erudition, insights, and popular teachings have motivated a new generation of students, scholars, and teachers to learn and undertake research on the riches of India's scientific heritage and to help enable its preservation. His creative and inspired teachings at ITT Bombay and his unique multidisciplinary scholarship continues to make an impact with a powerful combination of science, Sanskrit, and spirituality. His life's mission has been to inspire society to undertake research and give India its rightful place in the world of history, of science, and ignite interest in Sanskrit as a language of science. The subject of his talk today is birth, death, and rebirth, clinical and Vedantic perspectives. Welcome, Professor. Namaste. My humble pronouns to Swami Sarvapriyananda Ji and uh, other devotees here who are deeply interested in Vedanta. It has been my fortune to be here in the place where Swami Vivekananda, though not in this location, as I understood from him, but various disciples have been there for more than 100 years. I also had the opportunity to know Swami Sarvapriyananda Ji for almost uh, 16, 17 years when I happened to meet him for the first time in Bilurmat. So let me get on to the topic of uh, talk today. It just happened uh, a few months ago that one of the swamis of the traditional mats in India so asked me to share the perspective of birth, death and uh, rebirth as has been stated in our scriptures and then also see, does it have any relevance today? So that was the occasion in which I started giving some thought on this topic. So I'll start with the earliest reference that we have to this question, whether there is something which is beyond the phenomenon of death, or is it something which completely subsides? So we have the reference to this in Kathopanishad. And then I will quickly take you through what is the perspective that we have from modern understanding of what is birth death. And then I will also take you through how Vedanta defines these terms birth, death, and rebirth, and also perhaps reincarnation. And then, is there a connection between this Janma and Karma? Then, what are the advantages on choosing this over the other? And then we will have a few concluding remarks. The first mantra in the Kathopanishad goes like this. Ushana havai vajashravasaha sarvaveda sandadav tasyaha nachiketa nama putra asa. So Vajashravas was a famous person. So the term actually, so once I had an occasion to see 
a certain sort of show made out of this story in the Kathopanishad. There, somehow I was a little disturbed when I saw that uh, this story has been misportrayed wherein it was shown as if the person wanted to give only useless things. See, there, there is a mantra which says, Pito daka jagdhatrana dugdha doha nirindriyaha ananda namate lokaha. So he was giving away cows which were, Pito daka means once they had the ability to drink water. <laughs> which means even for ourselves, at some point we don't have the ability to consume and some device has to be <laughs> enabled, right? So this is what happened. So this is what was the state of the cows and these cows were given by the father. So Nachiketa, having observed this, makes a certain question. Now that is the story, but it is not that he wanted to give away only useless cows, but the sacrifice demanded that he has to share whatever he possesses. So the other good things were also given, these were also given. So that is how we have to understand. So that is what is nicely explained in the commentary. So later I had to tell them, I hope they change the show. But <laughs> <laughs> so this is what happened. So this uh, is the story and the Nachiketas. So the story goes and then he was sent to Yamaloka and then having uh, gone there, he was spending three days and Yama was not available. So then he gives three boons. Then comes this question. So three boons were given. The third boon he asked like this. Eyam prete vichikitsa manushye asti teke najam asti ti chayike etad vidya manushishta stvayaham varana mesha varastriti yaha. This is what he says. Prete means once this person leaves this world. Prakarshena ite. Once and for all, he leaves this body. Yayam prete. So that there is an understanding in the question itself that there is something which is beyond this body. But there is a doubt also. We don't see anything which is living. It is not something which is tangible. Vichikitsa means doubt. Yayam prete vichikitsa manushye. So humans have this doubt. Asti teke. One group of people say that there is something which is beyond this physical body. Other group says there is nothing. Nayam asti ti chayike. Another group says, Yetad vidyam. I want to know from this, you are considered the god of death. So please tell me what is the truth. This is the question that is being posed by him. Now, when you say that there is something which is beyond, so it is not obviously tangible, nothing is perceptible, nor can one have inference where we generally have a certain concomitance between two entities and here what is the entity with which one can have this concomitance, vyapti, based on which we can have this. So this entity, what he has in his mind is atma, that is what we call. And this entity atma is described in a commentary. Shari Rendriya Mano Buddhi Vitriktaha Dehan Tara Sambandhi. Deha means this physical body. Dehan Tara is another body. Something which connects with one body and the other body. Dehan Tara Sambandhi. Shari Rendriya Mano Buddhi Vitriktaha. That which is distinct from this physical sharira, all the sense organs, as well as the mind. So how do we conceive of this entity? That is very simple if you just think for a moment that we have this notion which is presented to us by the word I, aham is what we say. So this aham obviously cannot be connected with this physical body because physical body is continuously changing. So it cannot be tagged with this physical body. I might have been 5 pounds or 8 pounds. Now I may be 158 pounds, right? So there is obviously I cannot tag this eye with this because it is different. My indriyas were so powerful, so I could see something which is 50 meters away, but I can't see something which is 5 centimeters away. So this also cannot be done. So sharira indriya, so too the case of mind also. 
See, there are people who have just suddenly a stroke comes and all that you had is all gone. So this buddhi, which was so sharp, so it just becomes completely dysfunctional. Then also this person maintains the notion of I. So obviously, so this has to be different from sharira, indriya, buddhi. So this is what we call. And this entity, as an abstract entity, let us conceive of whether it is sensible to hold such an entity or is it not sensible is something which we will see. So from the viewpoint of logic, we can see there is an entity which is referred to by I. The locus of I has to be different from sharira, indriya, buddhi, vitirikthaha. Okay? So the connection between dehantara, another deha, see that we will have to see. Okay? Why is it that we may have to admit, if at all we admit, so does it make sense to admit, does it have any relevance to admit. So that's what we will be seeing. So the basis for this question is, so why Nachiketa asked this question? And he believes that by knowing this entity, there is a Parama Purushartha. Okay? So one actually gains something which is nothing which can be achieved here, but it is this knowledge which will give you eternal freedom. So keeping this in mind, so he asked this question, I want to know to the nature of this entity. This entity, na pratyakshena, that, see, that there is something which is connecting between two bodies, he is not something which can be known through pratyaksha, it cannot be known through hanumana. So, etad vijnana adhinaha paraf purusharthaha. Paraf purusharthaha means something which is ultimate, okay, sought by human beings, okay. So this is what it is, this is the basis. Okay, let us come to this notion of birth, death and so on as understood by clinicians. So normally we understand this phenomenon to be a lump of flesh coming out of another lump of flesh. Okay, this is what is birth, right? So at a given point of time. So this could be something which can be very natural <laughs> and it could be assisted by various things and so on and so forth. But then who decides this formation? Who decides when it has to come out? And who decides in what shape it comes out? Etc. These are not something which are clearly understood. We try to make certain atoms by which we try to make this happen and so on and so forth. There are various atoms which are being done today. So there are various stages, they say, fertilization, implantation, and so on and so forth. But a couple of days back when I was <laughs> in Kansas City in some conference, there was a presentation made by someone on orofacial cleft. See, the orofacial cleft, so I have seen a couple of people myself. Now, what actually makes this person have this? We have absolutely no clue, right? What makes him have this? And uh, it varies from population to population. In America, the estimate is one in 1,600 has this. Whereas in certain other places, it may be little more 1.5 in about 1,000 and so on and so forth. Now, when we probe this, it's something which is very difficult for us to. The reasons are not evident, okay? I am saying this because we may have to connect it to something else. After all, the entire pursuit of science is to find a certain logical explanation to what is being observed by us. So you try to create a certain theory, whether it is gravitational theory, whether it is string theory, whatever it is. So you try to find a certain explanation for physical phenomenon that is being observed by you. This is the entire agenda of science, so irrespective of the discipline of science. So here we want to find a certain explanation why certain things are happening and we will not be able to explain. So there are difficulties in trying to understand many situations. Now this birth as such is also described in certain Upanishads. We use the word Janma, okay? death is Marana. 
birthis janma and rebirthis punar janma and incarnation we use the word avatara these are four terminologies which are employed in sanskrit now the upanishad also describes this and they describe not only one janma but three janmas <laughs> okay so pratham janma dvitiyam janma tritiyam janma this is found even in prashna upanishad i am not going to get into the details of that but the prashna upanishad when it talks of this janma it also talks of the importance in prenatal care okay. it is amazing to see okay so today we have understood that it plays an extremely crucial role in how the fetus get shaped over a period of time so this is something which you find very interesting in fact uh, the upanishad itself says sa bhavayitri bhavayitavya bhavati bhavayitri bhavayitavya bhavati this is a very beautiful usage so bhavanam is something you have uh, import uh, an attitude highly respectful attitude okay so towards that person so when you have this respect you would not like to harm you would not like to hurt in any way so these are the things so she is a bhavayitri and it is bound bound and duty upon you to see that she is taken care well so there are some interesting discussions there okay i'll leave that then let us move on to death so death as we understand today there are certain physical features which they look for okay so the heart beating stops the brain shuts and so on and so forth so these are things and then there is a declaration certificate which is being issued and so on happens but i saw this in detail so this is not something which has been universally accepted when this person is dead even among clinicians in fact even in america state to state <laughs> So there are certain differences okay so there is something which is going on among clinicians and in fact there are various theories which have been proposed cardiovascular respiratory viewpoint whole brain viewpoint information theoretic viewpoint and so on and so forth okay is there something which is beyond this phenomenon that is being observed by us okay so this is the question beyond death is there anything which connects so what was connected with this body does it get connected with something else this is where the question is okay so for that we don't have any evidence to say but i don't know if uh, some of you have seen this video this was shared with me if a couple of years back by someone so towards the last part of the slide you see dr sam parnia new york university so there is an interesting video so this video basically shows and he in fact in his own words he says this dead person knows that he is dead okay this is <laughs> <laughs> so how does a dead know that he is dead okay so you watch the video i am not going to spend much time on that and uh, there are some interesting things which are being stated there okay this is short video 5 6 minutes uh my point was to tell you that so there are certain devices that we have been able to develop today where this clinically dead person can be subjected to the instrument and based on studying certain other phenomenon you are able to see that it is not completely ceased okay so that is the idea okay this can extend for a few minutes and for in a few hours in certain other cases and so on and so forth clinically he is declared dead but so this resuscitation etc that we have today so there are some interesting things now let us move on to what our ayurvedic physicians have to say so this is so with regard to death okay and other phenomena so in charaka samhita in sutra sthana we have this interesting discussion ath tritiyam paralo geishana mapadyate see we have see in fact in bhadaranyaka we have this so putraishana vittaishana daraishana and so on we have and there is something called lokaishana also now 
this lokai shana so in the scriptures see forget about scriptures we also talk about this heaven hell rex I mean, there is a vyavahara in our transaction so verbal statement so what is this heaven what is this hell etc so we can conceive of a certain place in fact there is a nice verse for me so the swa enna dukhena sambhinnam nachagrasta manantaram abhilashopanitancha tat sukham svapadaspadam see swarga we would we use no so what does this verse say so you conceive of a certain location which is totally disconnected with the word sorrow okay <laughs> yet na dukhena sambhinnam okay where you do not experience any kind of bondage you are absolutely free okay nacha grastam anantaram not only that that is not sufficient if i feel like having something it should be available for me <laughs> see abhilasha upanitancha okay so all that you desire for is also granted so what more do we need so that is what we call as heaven okay that sukham okay whatever happiness that one can have if these conditions are fulfilled is described by the term swaha this is how they define the word swarga that is why we say swarga prapti and so on okay so let us conceive and of course there are uh, numerous descriptions of what is hell naraka and so on now this lokaishana means so here we are continuously undergoing cycles of happiness and sorrow and uh, therefore there is a natural desire in the person that he would like to go to a place which is completely disconnected with the term sorrow itself okay so that is the idea so this paraloka yeshana yeshana means desire tritiyam paraloka yeshana mapadyate katham bhavishyamaha itaschuta naveti now if you have to desire for such a place then who is desiring this fellow has to be going there right <laughs> so that you are leaving this body and you will acquire some other body where you will be able to enjoy so this desire itself naturally is connected with an understanding that there is something which is connecting you with another body in another place right so it is like someone see moving from here so i have some uh, nice apartment near alps <laughs> okay so this same entity goes there to a different location and he is able to have a different kind of an environment so bhavishyamaha itaschutaha means so once you slip from this world bhavishyamaha nava are we going to be there or not kutah punaha samshayaha why is it this doubt ಸಂತಿಹ್ಯೇಕೆ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಕ್ಷಪರ ಪರೋಕ್ಷತ್ವಾತ್ಪುನರ್ಭವ ನಾಸ್ತಿಕ್ಯಮಾಶ್ರಿತ ನಾಸ್ತಿಕ್ಯಮಾಶ್ರಿತ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಕೀಪ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಸಿ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಸೇ ದಿಸ್ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಅದರ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯೂ ವೆಹಿಮೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ದಟ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಓಕೆ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ರೈಟ್ so nastikya maashrita ha on the other hand santihi agama pratyaya deva punarbhavam ichchanta ha see it is like some of the indians who have come here they are neither able to leave all the rituals nor able to perform the ritual <laughs> see so there is something like that see there is a saying in tamil see some of you tamilians may be there the kuruku aase meese ke aase no this fellow wants to have a long mushtaq but he also wants to have porridge so the mushtaq should not touch the porridge <laughs> he wants to have both <laughs> so this is how things happen now so this is the situation see so i am unable to take the view point so which is presented by nastikas i am also unable to imbibe okay what is stated in the shastras so this is the doubt okay atas samshaya ha kin nukhali asti punar bhavo na veti see interestingly this is a discussion which is presented in charaka samhita so this itself makes a very very clear picture 
about the text gives us. See, this is not, see, all the diseases and the cure, etc., cannot be simply connected with the chemicals which are in, inducted into this. So, there is another thing which is really happening, right? So, this placebo, nocebo effect, all that we are trying to do today. So, it very clearly says, demonstrates that. So, therefore, they very clearly have understood that these diseases need not necessarily be controlled only through chikitsa. Okay? This internal chikitsa is also possible. Okay? In fact, today, so they have uh, separate departments to study okay, what vitamin, how much of protein has to go, <laughs> all the formulations, etc. are given. But I have seen people who, I mean, one, one instance, somebody came to my house. So we were uh, in the process of bringing out some Veda texts. And this person who came from Kashi, he spent about two months. So he thought that it will be over. But uh, seven weeks passed. So there is some 20, 30 percent remaining. So he takes a decision that I will not consume anything but for water for one week till the work gets over. Okay? And uh, he finished it. So, so only water, this happened only some 25 years ago, I am saying. And only water, the last day, so he has a flight to catch at 7.30 or so. So I was there with him the whole night. So at 2 o'clock, he starts writing the preface to the entire volume, 25 pages in about two and a half hours. <laughs> so what I am trying to say is there are some people who cannot continue their work unless they have coffee every two hours. See, this is also there. <laughs> Whereas this person, I'm just saying, see, there are certain things which, so beyond our comprehension, see. So that is what I'm trying to say. That is why there is a, see, there are certain things which are being released, whatever is required, so internally. So these are difficult to digest, but <laughs> that is reality, okay. Now, this Charaka Samhita also says, Tatra Buddhiman, if you are an intelligent person, Nastikya buddhin jahyat. Okay? May you drop the view that there is nothing which is beyond this body if you are a wise person. Okay? This is all it says. Vichikit sanche. <laughs> doubt also. <laughs> See, samshayatma vinashyati, right? So, doubt also should be dropped. Kasmat vai. He says, pratyaksham hi alpam. Means, the ability to grasp things through pratyaksha is very limited. Okay? Pratyaksham hi alpam, analpam apratyaksham asti. See? Apratyaksham, which is not perceptible to us, tangible to us. See, for instance, even in science, who knows the black hole? Who knows about black energy? It's all apratyaksha. Right? Analpam asti. In fact, <laughs> so the most of the universe is in a different form. Okay? Analpa Masti, we have certain mechanisms by which we are able to see that it has to exist. Very simple. So, with the tools that we have to explain, so we are not able to explain and if we hypothesize the existence of this, we may be able to explain that. So, that is how it is as of now. Okay? So, similarly, so we have to just understand Analpam Pratyaksha. Okay? So the domain of knowledge which is beyond Pratyaksha is something which is very vast, okay? Analpam. See, in fact, it further says, just to give you an idea, see? So you employ your own sense organs. See, that is the only source of cognition for you, okay? At least in the way, Jagradavastha. Are you able to see what these sense organs are? <laughs> so, Yaireva Tavad Indriyaihi Pratyaksham Upalabhyate Tanyeva Pratyakshani. See, the sense organs which give you this Pratyaksha are themselves not Pratyaksha. Right? What is exactly I mean? I mean, there is a ball, but beyond that, I mean, if you just probe into how we have the sense, at one point, we just very really clearly understand what creates this image in my mind. Okay. 
so similarly this uh, <laughs> i'll tell you one instance i just reminded so this happened almost uh, maybe 15 years ago when i went and when i went and uh, joined iit bombay one person said let us go to some tribal area is some or some event is happening there we want to reach them out i went and i came back then i was actually sitting in the front uh, seat so there was a blow of air in the car it was very hot in the summer we were just going then in the night so i picked up the phone i was un unable to hear one ear the other ear was okay so i just left it so next day evening i shared with my friend no no let us go to hospital he said okay i went there then uh, this is a famous hiranandani okay that hospital <laughs> it is one place so there are doctors examined and then said so there is a sensory neural hearing loss for you so you can go and choose your hearing aid <laughs> this is what they said <laughs> okay and she recommended and then i uh, just uh, i was in dilemma whether to go and get or not but then somebody a friend who said no 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 let us consult one more person the reason the said was you should have come within 4 5 hours so it is almost uh, 18 hours 19 hours so it is very difficult so something would have been done otherwise then uh, some said the next day some other hospital is the best hospital best doctor i went there so and then he also said sir you have come very late so but i'll try my best so you be there for two three days i was there some treatment no improvement <laughs> so then uh, my mother rushed from uh, chennai <laughs> then my father said no no don't worry i'll do some mantra parayana so <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so he said the some two three four tweaks uh, so it just happened and uh, subsequent day there was some uh, minor improvement the next day i was able to completely hear then i showed the doctor so the result so the only statement that he made was miracles do happen <laughs> <laughs> this is the only statement and he sent off <laughs> no no what i am trying to say is there are various things which do happen for which we do not have clear explanation this is all i want to convey here through this story this is what it says apratyaksham analpam okay so our efforts is to see how we can understand all the phenomena now See even in Kathopanishad, see Asti Tiyeva. This is a very very beautiful mantra. See Naiva Vacha Na Manasa Prabhu Mshakyo Na Chakshusha Asti Ti Bhruvaton Yatra Katham Tadu Palabhyate. Why am I quoting this? I am saying this. These uh, people who have written this Charaka Samhita, Susurata Samhita, when he said Nasti Kya Budhim Jahyat. and what kathopanishad says asti tevo palabdhavya asti means exists so that there is something which is beyond this mind body sense complex is to be understood to be existing this is what it says asti teva okay so categorically it says upalabdhavya and that is what is being stated even there okay in charaka samhita So here Shankara Acharya makes a very interesting discussion. So he says, after all, let us an analyze now. He says, let us analyze whether something could be hypothesized to be existing or not. Okay. So for that he takes this discussion. The Shruti says, naiva vacha na manasa. You cannot understand it through words. You cannot understand it through mind. <laughs> So you cannot understand through your eyes, etc., etc. It says. Now he says, after all, the existence and non-existence of an entity is only through this. Without this, so I am not going to accept. Or at least, uh, based on pratyaksha, you have some inference. Then also I can accept. This is a beautiful statement. Buddha di cheshta vishayan ched brahma idam tadithi visheshato grhieta. So suppose I want to know. Visheshato grhieta means I know the features along with that. Not only the existence. Suppose I close my eyes, so I touch something. I know it is hard, but I don't know what it is. It can be laptop, it can be table, it can be something else. So visheshata grhanam, 
possible only through sense organs. Idan tatu iti visheshato grihyeta. Buddhya duparamecha. You are saying that this entity Atman is to be understood not through mind, not through walk, etc., etc. Buddhyadi uparamecha grahana karana bhavat. Grahana means understanding. So, karana, the means are not available. Grahana karana bhavat. Anupalabhyamanam nasteva brahma. There is nothing like atma. Okay? Because it is not available for any of the sense perceptions. Nasteva brahma. Further, he says, Yadhi karana gocharam tadastiti prasidham loke viparitancha asaditi. Whatever is available for my senses, I say it is existing. Viparitancha, that which is not tangible to me by any means, I say it is non existing. Iti loke prasidhi atascha anarthako yoga. Then he says, Satyam, true. Let us take you okay, to a different level of analysis. He says, Satyam, naiva vacha na manasa na chakshusha na api indriyehi praptum shakyate. This is what Upanishad says. Okay? I will not get into details. I am Swamiji would have explained it in various ways. So the point I want to convey is something which is important here. He says, tathapi sarva vishesha rahitopi jagato moolam mityavagatatvat. Moolam means something which is the basis for this. How do we present this Atman or Brahman as? We present it as an entity which is the cause for this entire universe. Jagato Moolam. Iti avagatatvatu. And let us assume that, so we keep destroying things. So even if we just go to this yard, so all cars may be crushed all things may be crushed. But then it does not disappear totally. So one form gets transformed into another form. So we can't just say it completely disappears. So this, this sharira is burnt. Okay? So he is just saying that there is an entity which has to be accepted as existing. So astitva nishthatvat. Karya pravilapasya astitva nishthatvat. Any entity that completely ceases, so it finally ends with some astitva. See, karya pravilapasya astitva nishthatvat. Okay, so it may be tangible, it may not be tangible. The matter can become an energy which becomes intangible to you in some form, but it does not cease to exist. Okay. Karya pravilapasya astitva nishthatvat. Similarly, when we say, now let us go back for a moment. So I told you that this notion of I, logically if you think, has to be connected with some entity which is different from this sharira indriya buddhi. Now when you say this perishes, so what happens to this entity I? Okay. Karya pravilapa happens. So what happens to this notion? Okay. The locus of this. If you say it is different, so it is astitva nishthatvat. Now, in what form, etc., this is a different thing. Okay. So finally he says, buddhirihi. You said buddhihi pramanam. I also say buddhi pramanam. <laughs> buddhirihi naf pramanam. Sada satoho yathatmi avagami. Mulanche jagato nasyat. This is very simple. If there were no entity which is the cause of this universe, then asad asad ityeva upalabheta. So everything will be followed with asat. Suppose you say ghata sat, then mrit sat, so it may be something else sat, right? Fabric, cotton sat, vriksha sat, whatever, wherever you go, then moolam is sat. So if something comes from mrit ghataha, suppose you say, if it comes from asat, you should say asat ghataha. Right? Whatever is the cause, you say golden ring, then moolam is gold, so it is always associated with that. Now the prapancha is seen as sat, and therefore the moolam has to be sat. So this is what we hypothesize as atman. Okay? 
So now let us come to, so I will skip this Ashtanga Hridaya thing. What do we understand by birth, death and rebirth in our Vedanta? So in simple terms, so this Atman entity which we are hypothesizing, which is not accessible to the sense organs, okay, association of it with a physical sharira. This is what we call as Sat. The dissociation of the locus of I with the physical body is what we call as death. The reassociation of this entity with another body we call it as rebirth. Now, what is this avatara? This avatara, so we call Rama avatara, Krishna avatara, Ramakrishna the avatara, right? So, this avatara is described clearly in our shastras. Obviously, it has a physical form, and therefore the Chaitanya has to get connected with that sharira. So, this Chaitanya getting connected with the sharira. It could be somewhere very tangible, somewhere not so tangible. Okay? This avatara is svechaya. So connecting with the sharira out of one's own desire. So as far as we are concerned, so we are not having any kind of a choice whatsoever in choosing how I should look. <laughs> See, otherwise the entire industry will go. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we can choose. So, that is not possible. Whereas, in the case of avatara, it is possible. This is the distinction between rebirth and incarnation. Okay? So, this is what Shastra's position is. Svechaya sthula sharira grahana. Okay? Ishwarasya. So, this is uh, the position as far as birth, rebirth. Now, there are certain discussions whether Atma is one or many. I'll just tell you in a quick, quickly, irrespective of the discipline that we are pursuing, as long as we can have minimal tools to deal with, we would like to go by that. Okay, this principle of parsimony. So many of you would may be aware of this pursued by physicists for a long time about this unification of forces. Okay? So you broadly, there are, there are millions of forces, but they will be brought down to four, but even that four we would like to have one. Now when it comes to the Satman, it is the same question. Do you go by one Atman or do you go by many Atman? Okay, the principle of parsimony tells me that you would like to have one. But then the question will be, if one Atman were to be there, then how will you explain your Ishta is different from my Ishta, your Sukha is something which is not evident to me, your Dukha is not evident to me, how do you explain? So we say that, as this is the term technically is called Anusandhanam Ananusandhanam. Okay? Sukha dukha dhyananu sandhana. So your sukha is not evident to me. And if it is one Atman, then it should be evident to me. This is the question that comes. If the same Atman is dwelling everywhere, it should be evident. Now we say that it is not evident because it is not connected with the body. So I am not saying all sharira is one. I am not saying all buddhi is one. I am only saying the chaitanya is one. Okay. So, if the Chaitanya were to be one, then the normal question is, it should be evident to the Chaitanya. We say that there is a precondition that it has to be connected with the mind and the Sharira, Sukshma Sharira and the Sthula Sharira has to be connected, then only it will become evident. So, with this we will be able to explain and therefore, so this Advaita takes this position, okay, see, that Atman is one. There are others, I mean, who take certain other positions, etc. That is a different thing. Now, the next question is, when you are saying that this birth is samsarga, who causes this samsarga? Right? I am associated with this Vedanta society now. So, it is Swamiji's invitation. <laughs> 
so which made me this association all of you that there is a event so every association is going to end with dissociation but then the association happens through some cause right similarly for us to have this association of this chaitanya with this sharira what is the cause okay kena hetuna samsarga and kena sharirena samsarga to which form are you going to get connected with okay kada samsarga when is this association happening okay when is this dissociation going to happen and who actually governs this see who mean there is a certain force which governs everything so what governs this so these are the questions that are being posed and addressed in vedanta so how do we know for this <laughs> so this happens we have brought in into our theoretical framework something called karma okay that makes a lot of sense so this is what is done and uh, how do we understand so that's what we have in mundaka pariksha lokan karma chitan brahmano nirveda mahajat nasya kritah kritena tad vijnanartham sa guru meva bhi gacchet samitpani shrotriyam brahmanishtham there is a certain attitude with which you have to approach every subject is only like that so whether you want to understand microbiology or you want to understand molecular physics so you have to have a certain methodology and the methodology is what is presented in this shastra through which you will be able to comprehend this okay and it makes a lot of sense to you so this uh, karma to put it short i would just say it is essentially the law of cause and effect okay the domain in which your tools is unable to explain the law of cause and effect we bring in this it is like this black hole which is being brought into physics by us so you want to explain certain cause and effect and if you are not able to find so then i mean if you are able to provide a certain explanation and it makes a lot of sense then it makes okay a valid way of approaching okay so this uh, that we understand this is a common thing in fact uh, even people who do not have any kind of a grounding on this karma and so on and so forth all of us are able to have a certain sense see that if you do good you get good if you do bad you get bad this is a general thing that is there and that what is stated punyo vai punyena karmana bhavati pap of papen ha see the upanishad very clearly says punyo vai punyena karmana bhavati you do good things you get good things you do bad things you get so now the question is generally people is i see this was a very very nice person all through the life but he was suffering okay he is a fellow who does not think of any good for others he is happy <laughs> <laughs> so that i said this is not going against karma it is only trying to go and then establish karma more firmly because we don't say this karma is going to immediately yield fruit so this karma our shastra says it is just anuvartate see it makes you get associated with the sharira and which sharira at which place etc see for instance even this man see so this um, at one point one of the richest men bill gates <laughs> so he had the karma to study in a school which had a computer 1968 only one school had computer that is some lake side school in seattle so he was a brilliant mind but just imagine some millions of students at the same age did not have the access otherwise many billion <laughs> bill gates would have come <laughs> so what i'm saying is this karma is something which associates you at a particular location see this is not something which can be very easily understood sometimes we explain this through the word luck so good luck bad luck ill luck etc so all that okay now this is what we have clearly theoretically formulated as karma okay so this uh, so further all these questions which are uh, normally bothering us can be nicely explained through this theoretical framework of karma this is all i wanted to tell this slide also essentially tells you that so there are deep discussions in shastra see 
you just take gati you take jati you take linga you take varna you take kula you take deha indriya see so all of them widely vary now take this instance so today there is theory of genetic theory there is epigenetic theory etc etc various things are there with all this theory in place you will not be able to explain why the same parents have twins who have completely different characteristics okay one boy may be so brilliant at the age of 4 he may be knowing 400 ragas how do you explain so you have no theory to explain neither astrology can explain <laughs> okay so that's where we bring in this karma we just say purva janma samskara okay that seems to be a feasible explanation that we are able to offer okay to explain something which is completely beyond the domain of our understanding and uh, this is a very beautiful verse which i really liked in a text called shatashloki now bhagavat pada says see here i was telling you that this atman is different from sharira indriya buddhi so you are just visiting this body <laughs> so he says here beautifully that our janma is just like our stay in a guest house you understand the sharira to be a guest house are you so going to be bothered about what is happening in the guest house nothing right even if we bother we may be bothering only a bit so this is what it is so this is tishthan gehe griheshah atithi riva okay just like an atithi suppose i stay in chandramouli's house <laughs> okay so as long as a place is there for me to <laughs> sleep <laughs> so that is good enough for me right beyond that i don't care so similarly this sharira is essentially for you to stay for some time and then go elsewhere but as long as you are there you be good you don't destroy that <laughs> so you, you don't create trouble so this is what we need to understand no no this is a beautiful perspective for us to understand in the long framework see just imagine the lifetime of earth so many millions of years and if you just go you talk of billions of light years okay this is such a large framework and the association is only for a short while and here if you can provide a certain theoretical framework wherein you can nurture goodness and you can enable him to stop doing okay activities which are likely to harm others as well as oneself there is nothing like that this karma framework very clearly says na bhuktam kshiyate karma kalpa koti shatairapi see so if you have done bad things it is going to chase you no way you are going to escape from it on the other hand bhagavad gita नहि कल्याण कचिद दुर्गति तात गच्छति इफ यू हैव डन समथिंग गुड यू आर नेवर एवर गोइंग टू इट मे बी टेम्पररली यू मे बी एक्सपीरियंसिंग वॉट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड इज दिस असोसिएशन इज ओनली टेम्पररल ओके सो दिस इज समथिंग विच इज एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट एंड पवरफुल टूल दैट हैज बीन प्रसेंटेड टू अस सी बाई रिमेनिंग अन अटैच the enlightened person so when i say unattached see if you just think for a moment all the complexes that we develop whether it is superiority or inferiority have to be connected with either this aham notion or this mama notion see i i am short i am long i am fair who it is the sharira i am intelligent i am bright i am dull which there is a faculty so you are able to perceive this so that the observer okay which is the locus of i he is different from what is being observed by you okay so this is a beautiful framework and uh, all that our shastra tells you is so you are the observer okay observing what is happening in this sharira okay 
So if you are able to see the distinction, okay, so that helps you enormously. So here, so if you are able to also see, there is another thing which is very important for us to understand. Nobody needs to be taught to take care of this body, right? The moment you are tagging yourself to this, see that this Atma, even assume that you identify yourself with the body, so you don't need to be taught. But all that it says is, it is the same Atman which is dwelling. So if you have this Bhavana, then as you care for your body, you will also care for other things. Okay. So this is a natural outcome of it, once you have this theoretical formulation. So that is what is something which is being presented through this theory to us. See, so they do not allow, so those who have this jnana, so they do not allow the external world to dictate their inner state. So that is what happens in most cases. Okay. So I is the locus of this Atman. So that whatever we have, so which is distinct from this and therefore anything that is happening can only affect this physical sharira and not the locus of I. Okay? So this is the picture that comes out. So the example that Bhagavad Pada gave as uh, a guest in the guest house is something which is very beautiful. And uh, realizing this transitory nature of experiences okay, will make us not struggle too much. So excessive thing as to what may happen tomorrow, etc. So all this will be really gone and we will be able to enjoy a certain peace and serenity within ourselves. Irrespective of what is happening. You observe, okay, so this was fair, now it is dark, it's okay. So this was able to listen, now it is not able to listen, it's okay. <laughs> See, so it did not have wrinkles, now it has got wrinkles, I am seeing it, it's okay. <laughs> So this is going to happen. Why bother too much? It was having a glow at one point of time, now it may not have. So what? I am seeing that I am different. So this is the kind of view that uh, the Shastra is able to present to us by describing what is really birth, what is really death. So this is just an association for a certain period of time. In fact, so you find this beautifully stated even in a single verse, I am just reminded of that. So all of us are bothered about Sukha Dukha. This verse says, see, Sukhasya Dukhasya Nakopi Data, Parodadati Ti Kubuddhi Resha, Ahankaro Miti Vrithabhi Manaha, Svakarma Sutra Grathitohi Lokaha. A beautiful message. I will tell you. The Sukha and Dukha, see, happiness and sorrow, it says, nobody gives you. Sukhasya Dukhasya Nakopi Data. Normally we think it is because of this fellow, I am into hell now. <laughs> so this boss is killing me, etc., etc. Now, Sukhasya Dukhasya Nakopi Data, from a different framework, it says, Parodadatiti kubuddhi resha, that someone else is responsible for this is not a wise thinking. Kubuddhi, it is a low level thinking. And so too it adds, Ahankaromiti, I have achieved this, etc., etc. It just see, boosts your ignorance and boosts your arrogance. Okay? Ahankaromiti vrithabhimanaha. In fact, the entire corporate people are just trained to only teach this and they have to pay 60,000 rupees for this. <laughs> One quarter of the verse. <laughs> okay? So I have seen all these management things. Ahankaro miti vrithabhi manaha. And finally it says, Svakarma sutra grathito hi lokaha. The entire world okay, is tied through this karma sutra. See, in fact, Rama says, see, in Valmiki Ramayana, you will not find in 24,000 verses, not a single place Rama would have blamed Kaikai. Okay? He lost the kingdom, he lost Sita, he lost all the, lost all the kith and kin, 
and uh, at no point of time he tries to say this is all because of kai kai okay even in the moments of extreme frustration the verse that says is actually very beautiful he says manye maya nunam abhipsitani papani karman yasakrat kritani tasyaya madhya patito vipakah dukhena dukham yadaham vishami it is true that i am moving from one circle of sorrow to another circle of sorrow okay but i believe that this is all because of the karma that i have done in purva janma hi manye maya nunam abhipsitani papani karmani asakrit kritani today tasya vipakah adya ayatah tasyaaya madhya patito vipakah dukhena dukham i am just entering into hi this should not be mistaken suppose somebody is suffering it is his karma you should not say <laughs> see it is only with respect to you <laughs> see what we have to understand is if you undergo see some sort of a difficult situation don't keep blaming other fellows okay so and try to in fact this titiksha is essentially that sahanam sarva dukhanam apratikara purvakam chinta vilapa rahitam sa titiksha nigadyate it is only with respect to you so everything has to be very clearly understood see what will help us see to establish a serene atmosphere around us is what has been beautifully stated see so if the other fellow is suffering you have to reach him out see, if you have some headache so if you keep welling then you will create headache for others <laughs> right so their sahanam is important so this is something which has to be very clearly understood that's what our shastra says and uh, i think i will leave some time for question here the point is see not many things are known through pratyaksha there are so many things which are known only through agama okay and anumana okay anumana of course science employs science people think that agama is not acceptable in science not at all true okay so i'll just leave that so <laughs> so <coughs> the last slide so no human being who is endowed with faculty of thinking would ever venture to do something which is likely to hurt him the moment one understands that it is the same self so the see the theory that we are trying to present is there is one chaitanya one atman which gets connected to various shariras not necessarily human beings even to grass monkey donkey tree etc okay it is this chaitanya which is connected with a physical form this is all we are saying okay so if you go to the deep science okay so which is discussing the origin of universe etc so there is no matter at one point of time okay the matter is something which is tangible to us so this is a matter to which we associate a certain chaitanya okay so the same self the conscious being dwelling so dwells everywhere one would never be unjust or unkind to others okay so this is simply because it is amounting to the causing see harm to yourself right nobody wants to cause nobody wants to be cheated right if this feeling were there then i think many companies will not try to cheat people <laughs> okay thus starting to contemplate on this fundamental question opens up a great grand way okay to fraternity love affection etc in fact upanishad time and again says see we have this upanishad see ken upanishad yah ched vedit atha satyam asti na chedi ha vedin mahati vinashti see if you see one good thing about this human being is he is blessed with the faculty to take care of other things also nothing more it is a flesh the donkey has monkey has we have if you just analyze so biologically nothing much different but so it is blessed see as the dog is blessed with sensing something <laughs> see which is not available for us so different things have different capacities in world so we have a certain capacity by which we will be able to 
care for not only this physical body but every other thing around us okay we have the tool by which we can take some measure to care for see that is the only distinction beyond that we don't have any other thing so therefore it says see with this tool that you have been blessed with if you understand this truth atha satyam asti so if you just keep pursuing only material pursuits as any other being does then i think you are losing something which is so special to you ki mahati vinashti hi this is what i have seen even swam vivekananda very powerfully says in various places okay is this then you should go to a zoo <laughs> somewhere he is the menegria he uses this word <laughs> see is this all the human being the dog enjoys the dog reproduces everything is so you should be sitting there why are you here i mean his words are too powerful okay so really really convincing and i am so happy uh, that i got an opportunity to speak in this vedanta society which got established by swami vivekananda and uh, swami ji has been so affectionate to me <laughs> and uh, thank you for providing this opportunity namaste <laughs>
So the reason I am saying this is, see you have a certain thing in your own mind, see, that bhavana is something which can give you all the necessary force that you require to accommodate yourself in certain situations. Okay. I tell you, there is one person, and even now I am telling you. So this bhavana, so we, so nowadays, anything that falls down, we just say it has to be trashed. Of course, we didn't do, we just take and we wash it and <laughs> eat it, that's what we used to do. Okay. So there are people who, so do, see, pada prakshalana. See, all that mud, they just consume. That bhavana, that they have doesn't affect, it only acts positively rather than negatively. So this bhavana plays a very crucial role, he is something which is there in Vedanta and which is there taken as such by Ayurvedic physicians. So you may to some extent have this bhavana brought into the modern medicine also. Now there is no other way because of various placebo tests and so on that you keep doing. So that it plays a crucial role, but faith can work miracles. <laughs> See, he is something which is a little difficult. Okay, so this Vedanta tries to connect. See, okay. so this is something which is uh, very, very useful. <laughs> yes, yes. <coughs> Hi, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm from the st same state uh, where you have come from. And uh, my question is, our Shastra says that uh, Atman is dwelling in a body which is temporary. Uh, if we realize that, okay, and the people, uh, our uh, siblings or our own uh, buddies, right, they think the opposite, right? And Opposite uh, means? They think this is the final uh, only life, right? There is no rebirth, and okay. this is this body is permanent, right? In the real life situation, right? When you have to make a choice on a given Sunday, whether you have to go to a church or Vedanta society, or go to a cinema or a beach, there is always a conflict, yes. right? Yes. And uh, you keep distancing yourself from the surrounding. Hmm. How do you go about it? Yeah. Thanks. See, one thing which we have to understand is the samskaras that you create in the impressionable age makes a lot of difference in making you at a later stage in the life. I, for instance, My mother used to make me get frustrated. Okay, at six o'clock, I mean, I have to run. Okay, come back to home and then do sandhya and then do certain studies, etc. Whereas my other own age boys will be playing, so they will just say they will make fun of me. Ah, see, Ram Subramani has been called by mother. He will run away. <laughs> see, that makes you feel a little bad. But I'm just saying. So those things that I have heard, see, if there were some lectures, so whether it is in temple across or somewhere else, when I was just entering into teens, see, whatever it is from age 8 to, let us say, age 13, 14, I mean, those have had a great impact in my life. If at all, I am able to say something, see, it is all because of what has been impregnated in me. See, there is a certain period of time in which you don't have that kind of questioning mind. Say, during that period, if you do not tap the potential which is there in the child, then I think you are really making the child miss something in life. See, the exposure that is given in a mind, see, in fact, <laughs> I'll tell you, there is a, there is a kavya called Kadambari by a poet called Banabhatta, amazing poet. He just says, 
ಕುಸುಮಶರ ಶರಪ್ರಹಾರ ಜರ್ಜರಿತೇಹಿ ಹೃದಯ ಜಲಮಿವ ಗಲತ್ಯುಪದಿಷ್ಟ ವಾಟ್ ಡಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೀನ್ ಉಪದಿಷ್ಟ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಸೆಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಅನ್ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಸಜೆಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ಲೋಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಎ ವಾಟರ್ ಇಟ್ ಡಸೆಂಟ್ ಸಿಂಕ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಇನ್ ಟು ವಿಚ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಕುಸುಮಶರ ಶರಪ್ರಹಾರ ಕುಸುಮಶರ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಫ್ರೇಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ರೆಫರ್ ಟು ಮನ್ಮಥ ಸೊ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ಟು ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಮನ್ಮಥ ಪ್ರಹಾರ ಕುಸುಮಶರ ಶರಪ್ರಹಾರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಜರ್ಜರಿತ ಹೃದಯ ಓಕೆ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಟು ರಿಟೈನ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಹೃದಯ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಮೈ ಫಾದರ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಸೊ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಈಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಎಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಟು ಟ್ಯಾಪ್ ವಾಟರ್ ರೈನ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಫೆಲೋ ಸೆಟ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಅನೇಬಲ್ ಟು ಟ್ಯಾಪ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಫಾದರ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಡಿಡ್ ಯು ಇನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ದ ವೆಸಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಕೀಪ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಡೌನ್ ಪೋರ್ ಸೊ ದ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಸೇ ಇಸ್ ಸೊ ಅಟ್ ದಟ್ ಏಜ್ ಸೊ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿನೈ ಬಟ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋಷರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಮಚ್ ಎರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಓಕೆ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಏಜ್ ತ್ರೀ ಐ ನೋ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾರ್ಡಿನರಿ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ಸ್ so who will be just taken along with them when they play they will be teaching this grammar they will be teaching various stotras and so on and so forth which later acts in a very positive way so if you just leave that year okay so that 5 10 years and then try to bring them later so that doesn't work in fact my father used to say see even if you wake him any time bhagavad gita will just come he had a stroke but then bhagavad gita veda will come and the reason that he said was so when his father used to do pravachana he was just some 3 years 4 year old he will just carry okay for the pravachana he may sleep there but then that samskara is there so bhagavad gita is just by heart for him so that is the age in which we may have to expose today all the gadgets are available to us for making right use on the other hand if you just allow them to play video games finished okay so that is what i would say so these young children so if you just make them think in a particular line see what is ultimate truth see na shastra na shastram na shishyo na shiksha na chatvam na chaham na charyam prapanchah you can declare but then at the vyavaharika level see samvritti satya <laughs> as you were saying see there is a paramarthika satya there is a samvritti satya see one may quote some exceptional example he brought, he was brought in this environment but he is useless etc but that is not the case one cannot just quote ramanujam that uh, he got he did not train mathematics but he was super bright so that doesn't work okay so that's why there is a beautiful verse i'll just try to say that ಸಂತಪ್ತಾಯಸಿ ಸಂಸ್ಥಿತ ಪಯಸ ನಾಮಿ ನ ಜ್ಞಾತೆ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ ಭರ್ತೃಹರಿ ಸ್ನೀತಿಶತಕ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ದ ಎಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಐ ನೀಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕೋಟ್ ದ ವರ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಹೌ ದ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಮೇಕ್ಸ್ ಎ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಸಿಮಿಲೀಸ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಅ ವಾಟರ್ ಡ್ರಾಪ್ಲೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಅ ರೆಡ್ ಹಾಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇಟ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಇಟ್ ರೀಚಸ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಇವಾಪರೇಟ್ಸ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ದಟ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ವಾಟರ್ ಡ್ರಾಪ್ಲೆಟ್ the same water droplet if it falls on a lotal see lotus petal it looks like a pearl the same water droplet when it gets into that shell it turns into pearl itself so too the association makes him uttama madhyama aradhama okay and the association has to happen see when the mind is fresh not kusuma shara shara prahara <laughs> okay so that is very important see so once you are carried away by desires so once the ego starts growing so then it is very difficult to make things okay get into the mind see this is very important so i don't think 
see, I have seen, I'm just saying, so the environment, all of us can easily see, makes a lot of difference, lot of difference. You have to create the environment. And once you create, whatever you just present it to the child, child receives. See, if you just show rock, then it will start jumping. If you just do this Homa Prarthana, Devalaya, you should just bring, that's it. See, it is partially our failure, see, not to expose to the right things. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. She wants. Namaskar. Uh, my name is Madhu. Uh, can you please explain this in reference to Garuda Purana, what she said? Garuda Purana? Yeah. In relation to the death. Huh? There are various descriptions there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> pronounced to you. Um, my name is Rama and my question to you is you talked about um, the hypothesis that something exists beyond the body, mind and senses. Yes. And that um, how do you, how does Vedanta come to, and you also said that something that exists cannot be with, come out of non-existence. Yes. And that that is the proof that something exists beyond the body. Could yeah, you? in fact, even in his question, he was referring to this Atman, etc. When I say, see, association of this, so in fact, there are mantras which say, when we say, we talk about, so in order to make this distinction of Atman, we use this phrase, Jiva and Para. Okay, Paramatman, Parama and Jiva. So this distinction has to be very clear. When I say this moves from one to the other, so this Atma Bheda should also be understood. Atma Abheda should also be understood. See, Bheda is difference. So when I say that the association, this association of what we call as something as Sukshma Sharira, okay, a conglomerate of a few things. Now, this Sukshma Sharira includes this Jnanendriya Phi, so, Karmendriya Phai. So, there are a set of 17 entities including Antarkarana. Now, this entity is different from one to the other. Okay, that is what we may have to say. And uh, this association is what we call as birth. And this dissociation is what we call as death. Obviously, so there is no pramana by which we will be able to sense this entity, okay, obviously. But as I was trying to mention, so in order to explain, okay, the cause and effect of various things that we are able to see in an individual. So if we hypothesize that this is the Pura Janma Samskara that is being carried by this person, I tell you one example which was very striking recently. So once someone came to my house who was a Sanskrit teacher who teaches passionately Kaumudi to various people. And there are several children who have memorized 4,000 sutras at the age of 8. Okay, so she has trained. One such boy was born blind boy. And he had this or <laughs> orofacial cleft also. It is such a complicated thing that the doctors apparently advise the parents to forego the child. But apparently the grandfather said, no, whatever is given by Ishwara, I want to have. So I will try to work with the child. Okay. So this lady who came to my house, she said that there is a boy like this and I want you to have a conversation. I was so, in what did she say? She said, he has memorized Gita, he has memorized the Sutras, he has memorized Upanishads, he can sing several songs. So then I was so tempted, I just said you make a phone call immediately. I asked this, I had to open Bhagavad Gita book. <laughs> so I just asked a few verses, I just give one word, 
okay so he'll be able to say the entire verse the chapter so and various other things he will do then one or two sutras also i know kaumudi i asked him he was just able to say where it occurs and so on and so forth all that then fortunately a colleague of mine was there he was a musician and i asked him why don't you ask some raga he asked a half a dozen ragas he just does the arohana arohana and then he immediately sings a small song so this is a completely blind fellow who is just in teens now okay then of course upanishad also i asked he did so then i decided that i am going to go and see him so i took a couple of fellows a grammarian to test his grammar ability <laughs> see so so i did all that so all that i am saying is this has to do with purva janma samskara okay is this boy at this age so all that and i wanted to test so i just uh, taught him couple of verses so he was able to he immediately so the samskara is what i'm just saying he was immediately trying to take a device and then type it out then i asked what are you going to do by typing he said this may not be useful for me but this will be useful to someone who i may be teaching <laughs> <laughs> i'm not joking so this is all there is a certain samskara which we can very easily see so which cannot be explained by the exposure that we give to them and that is why we make this hypothesis that this antahkarana which plays a role in driving all these sense organs to this thing or that thing okay has to do something which has been carried by him okay so that is why we make this hypothesis in order to explain which is tangible okay buddhirihi naf pramanam <laughs> see no doubt Uh, hello professor uh you spoke about the theory of karma yes. which has great intuitive appeal great ethical appeal as a as a hypothesis that explains what we observe in the world okay but it is it is only a hypothesis right yes because you can have alternate kind of hypotheses also that what we observe is based on probability theory it's based on randomness it's based on a lack of understanding of a lot of phenomena I mean lack of understanding is acceptable yes but uh, this probability how do you explain through probability that all this i don't so see so let's take your example of bill gates you know they were computer resources were scarce a lot of schools wanted comp- computers then they all tried only a few could get it the school that he went to happened to be one of them and that's just that's just probability you know only a few could get it he was in the neighborhood he attended that school and Fine. The, his probability of leading a company like microsoft went up a lot somebody had to and he did and it's just probability there had nothing to do with his past birth no, no, his no. past karma just a different hypothesis okay now let us say so he was one among the 300 students who had this how many of them became bill gates again probability theory <laughs> no <laughs> what somebody is had probability to. no no just let us understand see one or two things we can just say that he was able to exercise his brilliance and so on and so forth which others were not as brilliant as that i am not accept i am not accepting there are so many people who make various investments in stocks not all others were dumb whereas for some it just goes so you will just say it is all probability yes so the, no no wait <laughs> now now this probability if you just extend so we just call it one of the karma is probability okay we are not excluding excluding probability we are not doing that so probability is included it has something else also is what i'm saying something <laughs> we don't understand so in that <laughs> sense the theory is, has great appeal because it is a really it a plausible has, explanation it has i think you may have to think a little more is what i would say or i have also okay. studied a little bit of probability <laughs> yes please thank you we had to wrap it <laughs> thank you swami ji so i can't resist the opportunity to say a few words captive audience of course but uh, also the presence of professor ram subramaniam now i'll just say that we have actually an important meeting upstairs and i would request the board members uh, you're excused <laughs> so you can just go upstairs and uh, uh, please uh, um, set up the meeting we'll join you upstairs but for the rest of you um, 
I'll say a few words about what he said, but first a little bit about him. Uh, <laughs> I remember meeting him some 17, 18 years ago, and I was a newly minted monk at that time. <laughs> and I heard this eminent scholar is coming to teach a, a difficult text, a, a classic Advaita Vedanta text, the Siddhanta Lesha Sangraha of Aptaya Dikshita. So I went to the classes. And I still haven't forgotten them. So nearly 20 years ago, uh, I mean, I won't praise him to his face, but it's one of the most brilliant performances that I have ever seen. You know, I was so impressed. Uh, one of the reasons, and after that, whenever he came, a few times more, he came to the university to give talks. So I would make, uh, I would take that opportunity to go and listen to him. Um, one of the reasons is, I think, uh, I, for example. I have a little grounding, whatever little training I've got in Advaita Vedanta, which is very minimal, actually. And for the rest, like science and stuff, I just read some books which are introductory books, you know, like books written by people for laypersons, like Stephen Hawking's books or whatever. I mean, there's so many such good books now. But there's still a layperson's introduction to science. And there are some scientists who are practicing scientists, actually working who sometimes become interested in Vedanta, in philosophy, and they pick up something by studying. Um, but it's never as good as having a you know, solid grounding of your own in both disciplines. So one of the rare persons who is uh, well-trained and an actually actively working researcher uh, in science, mathematics especially, uh, Professor Ramasubramaniam, at the same time, he has been trained very traditionally, um, as you may have guessed already. Uh, he uh, studied Advaita Vedanta in uh, Sringeri under the Shankaracharya and the, the training program there and completed a very difficult formal program, I think 2002 or three pro probably. Um, and this gives him an equal facility you know, uh, to bring to bear uh, the rigor and the logical analysis of modern scientific methodology um, uh, onto um, Vedanta, classical philosophy, and Vedantic insights also, and present them in a way which is very acceptable uh, to uh, people today, in this day and age. Um, you mentioned your uh, revered father. I remember he at one time came to teach us um, also. We were few novices, few monks, and he was teaching us Adhyasa Bhashya. Um, the sh classic work by Shankaracharya, his introduction to the Brahma Sutras. Um, and we were impressed how he didn't need any books. So, so, I mean, speaking to what you were saying about, you know, the, the thorough of, uh, grounding in, uh, 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 in a branch of knowledge, he didn't need any books. So he was teaching, and then at one point we asked him, how is it that you are able to quote uh, without any hesitation? And we are all flipping pages and trying to locate what he is saying. And he said, it's very simple. I have taught this particular text more than a thousand times now. So, <laughs> I'm com so he's completely immersed in that. You know? um, now speaking to what he was saying about um, the effect of studying this early, you know, being immersed in this culture, in some kind of uh, spiritual culture early in your childhood, there is a certain faculty which we have, all children have. This is called Shraddha. Uh, shraddha means a certain faith in the teachings of, um, of the guru and the shastra, the, the texts and the teacher, which we take it in pre-critically, before the critical faculties kick in. Now, this is very prominent in early childhood. So... I remember, I mean, my introduction to Ramakrishna Vivekananda was my grandfather used to organize these study circles in their house. And people in the neighborhood were asked to come in and join. And all the grandchildren had to attend compulsorily. So whether you understood anything or not, you just have to sit and listen. And we would get candy afterwards. So that was our main motivation. But you have to sit quietly and listen. And that puts in a samskara. I remember my father used to sit for meditation. And uh, he would, my job as a little kid, you know, you had those long playing records at that time, LP records. So Vishnu Sahasranam, uh, chanting, uh, bhajans. So my job was to put on the record and wait until the whole 45 minutes was over and then turn the record over 
Um, and then after the next 45 minutes was over, put it all back in the pa packet and you know, ni nicely uh, covered the record player and then go. But that 90 minutes, I had to sit. My dad was meditating, but I had to sit and listen to those uh, bhajans and chanting. And the re result was, I still remember. There were times when my dad was not at home and I was alone, it's not a school day. And so I would put on those by myself and sit and listen carefully. Uh, so that's a samskara which is created early, uh, and that has to be created a little early before, as he said, the, the, the critical faculties kick in. Now one might say, this is see the problem is this is not in fashion today. <laughs> in fashion today, is, people will say that, oh, that's uh, childish. Uh, one must critically examine everything. But what happens? And these ancient teachers knew this. If you critically examine everything without a fund of shraddha, without some basis, um, there are two possibilities. One is, one critically examines things which are subtle and difficult to understand and then dismisses it all. That I cannot come to any conclusion. And there are many people who don't even examine anything at all. They just go on with life. <laughs> and there are some people who really think things through. And what happens to them, unfortunately, is they cannot come to any conclusion whatsoever. And that's taken as the height of intellectual fashion, especially here in, in Manhattan. You know, it's, it's fashionable to be well-read, but it's also fashionable not to have any particular conclusions about philosophy, let alone religion or spirituality. That's just down market, and that's just dumb. Uh, if you're well-read in philosophy, at least at, at one point you were regarded as uh, you know, well-educated and classy. But it's not classy to have a conclusion. It's rather classy to have and you know, sort of float without having any particular conclusion. But if we have no particular conclusion, you don't remain untouched. Our instincts, biological instincts, and past samskaras, they will take over. They will take over. I mean, Bhagavad Gita was very clear about this. Krishna was very clear about this. That uh, if you have good samskaras, well, good for you. The divine attributes. But if you have bad samskaras, it's better to hold on to that teachings of the Shastras and struggle against your samskaras rather than, but if you do not hold on to the conclusions of you know, spiritual teachings, then our old uh, instincts or whatever has been installed by society, that takes over. And the harm is that we, after 5, 10, 15, 20 years, we are, as you said, jajjarita, with a worn out mind and body, we end up with nothing. We, we end up with uh, no meaning in life, um, uh, unhappiness, you know, sort of a kind of feeling of wasted life. I'll give you a very clear example, which speaks to this. I mean, I would say Professor Gayatri Spivak, who is uh, right here you know, in, in Colombia, she is probably the queen of postmodernism. What you speak about intellectual life in Manhattan, she would be at the right at the peak of that. And then she was asked, she has great respect for Sri Ramakrishna and, um, you know, so she was asked um, that, uh, okay, before that, I'll tell you another funny story about her. <laughs> Many years ago, in the early 70s, she's, she used to come here and she told Swami Pavitra Anandaji that um, the version I know is that she told uh, him, oh, Swami, I've lost faith in, um, uh, in, in Thakur, in Sri Ramakrishna. Later, she corrected me, uh, Gayatri Spivak. She said, I never said that, Swami. So I, I just told him, I've lost faith in God. I haven't lost faith in Sri Ramakrishna. Now, we who consider Sri Ramakrishna to be an avatar, we were puzzled by this. What do you mean if you have lost in faith in God? <laughs> so that's a very Spivakian turn. <laughs> she will leave you to think about it. She will not explain it. But she was asked, so how is it that you're critical about everything in the world, but you're not critical about, yeah, about Sri Ramakrishna, Sharada, Vivekananda? She said, oh, but they entered my mind in a pre-critical state. So, and then again, you think about it. He will not explain any further. <laughs> so yes, you can have. So, so the question is, uh, if you have this foundation of teachings from your temple or your church, so don't you have access to critical thinking? Shouldn't you think critically about it? You should. The ideal combination is you have this clear grounding, childhood, teenage, whenever it is, and then bring in critical thinking. It will only strengthen it. It will clarify and make the teachings luminous. Vedanta is, 
you gives full um, expression to your critical faculties. Uh, on the uh, basis of the Upanishad, it's not theology, which is used to justify whatever you have ta taken pre-critically, no. It just makes it clearer. Your intellectual inquiries make the conclusions of Vedanta just clearer. That's what happens. If we do not have that grounding, then what will happen is, Either we'll be that free floating, I don't believe in anything, I've read this, I've read that, but you know, I don't believe in anything. That's not the problem of the teachings, that's the problem of uh, my mind. It's, it's not, uh, it doesn't have that grounding, basically. And another thing can happen, either you spend your life free floating like a skeptic, and then the result of that is unhappiness and lack of fulfillment, a purposeless, directionless life. Or, you know, like Sri Ramakrishna used to say, you can collect as many zeros as you want, but if you don't have the one, it amounts to nothing. It amounts to nothing. It's a deep psychological you know, black hole which, which we have at the end of life, or very soon in life. Or, such people sometimes do become interested in religion. They do become interested, and they fall for the silliest and most awful things. <laughs> yeah, so-called very clever people in the world, very sharp people. You know, rich and successful, some of the silliest uh, beliefs, some of cult, something they fall for. It's because, again, of that lack of foundation and, you know, helped by critical thinking. Uh, so, what he was just speaking to what he was saying. Once again, uh, thanks to uh, Professor Ramasubramaniam for coming here. Mm, for many years, it was sort of a dream for me to, you know, get him here. Uh, thanks to this new technology, YouTube and all, we can take benefit from his classes, like Shatar Shloki um, and some other texts which he has taken up, some lesser known texts of Vedanta also, which he has taken up and he has taught them. They're all available on YouTube, so we can just sit and listen and get the benefit of this, which was very difficult earlier. Um, earlier you would have to find a pandit and then go and make, take all the trouble of staying there and trying to learn from that pundit. But now these things are available. Uh, his talks, his classes are available online. We extend our thanks to him and with a request that whenever he comes to the United States, uh, he has an open invitation here at the Vedanta Society of New York. Uh, we may be small people, but this is, as he, as he said, established by Swami Vivekananda. So there's a great heritage and significance in this uh, uh, ashram. Uh, we invite him to come and spend some time with us and give us the benefit of his uh, wisdom and his powerful and effective uh, teaching. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you to his sarathi also. <laughs> Thank you. Jai Ram Krishna.